we talked about the, uh, I guess you'd say the paranormal earlier, uh, and I wanted to return to another thing that's, that's later on in the book. The apparition at your ex-wife Susan's house, what was, how was that different than the apparitions in the accident? Um, at, at the house was, uh, was a, a situation where we, had, it was a big house and we had, uh, I was in the lounge and I was going to go to bed and I, if it was this, I've got a few from that house. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the one was, uh, when I, I, I had a briefcase, I had my stuff in and, and I was going to bed. So I closed my briefcase and went up to bed and I heard this bang downstairs. Oh God, what's that? And. I came down the three flights of stairs, which was to get to the hallway, and one of the huge paintings had fallen off the wall, because we had this big hall, and it was a, a, a big you know, seven-foot paintings uh, had fallen off the hall, and uh, oh God! And I walked into the lounge, and my briefcase was open. I thought, what is going on? You know, it's all some strange things happened in that house. All the keys disappeared once. And they were big keys, uh, you, know, you know, they were like nine inches long key, like keys for the doors. And they all disappeared and never, ever found them. 200 room house. Never found the keys. Was there, I hope there wasn't a different I, key for I, each of those 200 doors. Well, yeah, well, yeah, different keys for different bedrooms, yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know, for that day to this, what happened to them? Astral traveling and the silver cord. Yeah. Well, I, I got into that uh, quite a lot and... Um, and actually, because I was, it was a real great interest, you know, of what's beyond and what do you do and what's it like and leaving your body. And for me, I really tried to tried to do that. And it, it took me a while. I, I couldn't do it for a while. And then the one day I could leave my body and I managed to do it. And it jumped straight back in again. And I got this jolt. Uh, and then I could, I kept practicing doing it. and. And the, and, the, and the one time I'd done it, and it, I looked, I went onto the scene looking down on myself. And did someone help you with the practice? How no, did you? no, 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 no. I had to be alone, and, and a lot of the times in the earlier stages, I'd fall asleep trying to do it. So I'd get too relaxed and, <laughs> just, and just fall asleep. That makes sense because mm. it's sort of like a meditational yeah. place that you're going to. Yeah. The I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right because it's in the book. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. Akashic Records. Yeah, Kosick Records, yeah. Say, say your yeah, Kosick Records. Kosick yeah. Records, yeah. non-physical plane of existence. Mm -hmm. it, it was, how did you begin to get into this sort of thing? Was there a person I, who was an influence? Yeah, Lob Sam Rampa. And I, I, you know, I don't want to be like a preacher or anything like that. No, this. but it's interesting. But it was just something that I really got into, and uh, I was fascinated by the whole thing about it and uh, about where do you go and what's it like and what happens when you die and uh, you know is there another life and just the, the, the whole I won't go into it all now I'll get carried away are you still that curious but, uh, no not as bad as that now I don't uh, I mean I, I was fanatical on it absolutely fanatical but um, I mean I still believe in all that How about really? because I've done it uh, but I don't practice it now any organized religion that you're practicing no. None in your life. Um, you played so many jokes on Bill Ward, and I've l read about them and heard about them and had you tell me stories about them forever, and then to see that many of them in the book, <laughs> mine, you just go, man, this guy's lucky he lived through all this I stuff, know, especially the way you end the book. I will never set Bill on fire again. What is your relationship like with him today? <laughs> he won't talk to me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> it would. wouldn't surprise me either. <laughs> He's great, Bill. He's... Um, He's always been able to, to, to take the jokes, you know, and uh, I mean, and it was there were serious pranks there. Very serious pranks. And uh, Bill was the sort of person where every day we'd do something to him without fire. And if you didn't, I mean, they were minor things. They weren't quite setting him on fire every day. But if, if you didn't do anything to him, it, it'd say, is everything all right? And you go, well, yeah, why? Well, you haven't done anything to me. Uh, oh, all right, then. So you'd slap him around the face or something, I don't know. But he was that sort of person, you know. He, he sort of thrived on it, if you like. He sort of encouraged it. And you're still tight? How oh, often do you yeah. talk when you last yeah. talked to Bill? I saw him, um, again, I saw him a couple of months ago, maybe longer than that. And, and, and when, we, 
he was sitting at the table like this and um, and I was behind him and it had one of those uh, cycle horns on the table. So I picked it up and Bill was writing down something and I went beep, right in his ear and it was so loud I, and it hurt my ear and I wasn't even by it. And Bill just lapped up and he turned around and he said, I don't suppose it. Uh, I don't suppose it, it, you're bothered that I had a heart problem, dear. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, you know, it's, it's just so casual, Bill. I yeah, don't suppose it bothers you. I've had a, I've had a heart problem. <laughs> but it did. You watched as the ambulance came and went with him. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Uh, yeah. And that, years later, but I mean, it moved you. It was really. Was oh, that? A, God. Yeah. Was that an upsetting moment? Yeah. Well, we, at first. You didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what was going on. Right. Bill, we were rehearsing and um, for a tour, and we finished the set. And Bill said, "Oh, I feel a bit rough." He said, "I'm going to going to have a lie down for a bit." And I said, "Great, okay." And um, I went upstairs with him because uh, we all lived in the, this ha house where we were rehearsing. And um, he said, "Oh, you couldn't ask uh, his guy that worked for him to come up and just massage my arm. It's going a bit numb." So I said, OK, as so I went down and sent him upstairs to go and massage Bill's arm, do a bit of therapy on it. And meanwhile, Geezer and myself went out for a walk. And as we walked, it was, a, it was quite a long drive, and, we, and then we're walking, we've probably gone about half a mile or a mile, and we saw this ambulance come flying by. And we jokingly went, oh, it's probably for Bill, you know, joking. And uh, never thought any more of it, and, and then we, we turned around and started walking back towards the house. And then we saw the ambulance coming the other way then. Oh, blimey. And we got there, and Ozzy's outside going, oh, they've taken Bill, they've taken Bill, He's, Bill's had a heart attack. And, and it was bloody hell, you know, it's a, yeah, a, bit, a shock. I, I, I can imagine that it would be. Um... There's a guy who's no longer with us that you got to spend, I don't know how much time with, but you were on a TV show as so we talk about life and death sorts of things with Bill. Um, it was in 1978, you did Top of the Pops with Bob Marley, also on the show. Did you get to actually hang with him, talk no, to him? No, no. Nothing? No, we didn't. Um, <clears throat> uh, it was, we were going as far as just being on the show, really, but the, the thing <laughs> was that Bill... In them days, he went through a little period of, of doing all his hair in, in, in braids. braids. And um, it was probably very unusual to see somebody else with black, because Bob Marley's, Marley's on the show. And I'm sure he thought he was taking the piss. But he wasn't. It was just like, you know, that was Bill. He just, he just never knew what Bill would do. And he didn't do it on purpose. He, was, he, was, he, he had this for a, while, for a while, you know. So you didn't get to interact with him at all? No. No. I never did meet him at any other time. I did actually go and see him at um, when he was in L.A. Uh, uh, the Roxy? At the Roxy, yeah. So you went and saw him live. And, and I went, I popped in to see him. And I was the only white face in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great, you know. You got really to meet good. him? No, I didn't meet him. I just, I just went, went in for a bit, okay. had a listen, and then went out. Okay, know. so you still went to the show, saw the show, and cruised. You didn't yeah, go well, backstage? Yeah, well, I was in the club next door in the okay. bar. So I thought I'd pop in, you know. That's awesome. Well, you're you're very lucky to have uh, to have gotten to see him. A chapter in the book, and it would be wrong to not talk about Hawaii because uh, I I broadcast in Hawaii and I do afternoons there as part of All Things Considered um, broadcasting in, statewide out there. Chapter forty nine is Vinny says Aloha, and that was August of nineteen eighty at Aloha Stadium. Before that, however, uh, nine years before that. Black Sabbath came, the original Sabbath, and played in Honolulu. It doesn't get mentioned in the book, and I'm not expecting that you necessarily would remember it, but do you remember when you played in Honolulu? 1971, you played Hawaii. That was your first time. I remember we played, yeah, yeah. That's all you can remember. That's just... all I can remember, I, I, apart from it being, I was knocked out with it. Right. Fantastic. You ever come back since, other than the, uh, the 1980 show? No, we keep threatening to go there. Uh, I'd, I'd love to go and play there again. But you've never even gone personally. No. So these two trips were again. It. I, my, my wife and I, I said we'd love to go. We got to rope we're, you we're, in. We definitely want to go. We definitely want to go. But I'll just take you back with me on Saturday. <laughs> every, time wanna, every time I want to, every time I want to go, something comes up. So you thought I, about it? Yeah, we don't go on holidays that much because it's always work, and then it's like a working holiday. Right. Like if I'm in LA, my wife comes out, and I'm working. 
So that's generally what, what our holidays are. That's a great story with, uh, I know Carmine a piece really well. He says to say hi, by I the way. I well he would. <laughs> and uh, his, uh, his brother, who I know uh, uh, pretty well too, and I've met a bunch, he's told me the famous story about how the rain came. He had all the notes and everything just kind of blurred on his. <laughs> but he did a really good job. And uh, 